video lesson 6.5 uh, segments angles and polynomials so uh, polygons so we're going to talk about um, the properties of a dilation with respect to all of these uh, different types of things so uh, for the most part uh, the properties no, nothing changes um, in terms of what we've been talking about we're just kind of apply these things and kind of maybe um, uh, develop them a little bit more uh, and then we're going to take these po uh, polygons and we're going to um, use them and I'm going to show you how to dilate things when it's uh, on a graph and using graph paper so so as a reminder here right we've got two two things to remember right uh, dilations map segments to segments a line to a line array to array an angle to an angle right so that no matter what you are dilating the image uh, and the pre-image they remain the same figure the same item, the same object, right? It's not going to change how it looks, right? Uh, if I dilate a line segment, it's going to be another line segment, it's just going to be bigger or smaller, right? So, uh, with respect to that, there's things that we talk about uh, in terms of tra transformations, right? And those are distance preserving ones. So, distance preserving, which are things like a translation, reflection, and a rotation. And if you think back to previous videos, uh, we talked about how we can perform those uh, types of transformations and we called them basic rigid motion because when you did it it didn't change the size or the shape of the object uh, but th there are also ones that don't like dilations because these now change them so a, a dilation is not a basic rigid motion because it changes the size of the figure all right uh, with that so we can't guarantee that um, you know that when you do a dilation that uh, everything's going to be the same the angle measures are due right but not the side lengths all right uh there's another little thing here uh when dilating segments right remember we talked about when r was one right that means that there's been no actual change right the the figure hasn't been dilated um so when r is one the image is just basically a copy so there's nothing has been actually physically dilated. Um, but we do know, uh, and we've discussed this a little bit in previous videos, is that when you perform a dilation, right, uh, you've got one of two things occur. Either the resulting lines or, or line segments um, are parallel to each other, which is most often what we see. But there are also other times when they are collinear, right? And again, collinear. Right, just means two that end up on the same line. All right, so the theorem says that we can determine if something has been uh, dilated if they are on the same plane and they're different lengths. Right, if they are either parallel or collinear, then we know that one is a dilation of the other. So if we just look at example number one. Right, um, we have three different examples here, and they tell us to assume that a, b, and a prime, b prime are not the same size, even though in, in uh, figure b they do kind of look similar to each other, but we're going to assume that they're not because they tell us that. So by looking at these, we say, well, how do we know if they are, in fact, a dilation of each other? Well, in here, right, I cannot solely be a dilation of one to the other for figure a because the resulting figures are not parallel or collinear. Right? So for one, it doesn't work. So therefore, there's not a way to, to get A prime, B prime solely by a dilation. Other transformations would have to be performed in order for it to occur. All right? Same thing for B. Right? There's not going to be a single point of dilation that's going to map A, B, um, to a prime b prime because these resulting two line segments right here are not parallel and they're not collinear but in example number uh figure c right these are collinear so these are collinear so therefore right a prime b prime is the image of a b under a dilation so there is a spot now where that point is that's something else that we have to you know figure out or, or be able to determine at a later date but we can at least say at this point that we do have a dilation so 
I just wanted to touch upon those properties. I think it's important uh, for us to make sure that we know, and it helps to kind of um, help us out while we're kind of going through different things. All right, so then the other part of the today's lesson, uh, and the, what I really wanted to focus on the most was how do we dilate if we are asked to do so on a graph paper? Best part about this is we don't need a compass. All right, you do need a straight edge, but we don't need a compass. All right, so I figured I would show this using some of the other figures, uh, some of the polygons that we um, have talked about, but we haven't really seen in our constructions too much. So we're going to utilize this first one. We're going to do a parallelogram. So most importantly, start off by uh, plotting the points and coming up with what your figure is. So we got negative six, eight. So one. goes here. This is A. We got negative 2, 4. That's B. We've got 6, 4. Puts it here is C. And 2, uh, 8 is right here. That's D. All right. So using your straight edge, I'm going to connect all of those dots to create my uh, parallelogram. All right, so now that we got that done, we notice we need two things in order to do the dilation, right? We need a center of dilation and we need a scale factor. So in this one, they tell me that the uh, uh, dilation is performed at the center of the origin. So that's the important part there. That's my center of dilation. And the scale factor is r equals a half. So that means, right, we're going to center of dilation is here at the origin, right? Well, this is the origin. I'm going to say O for origin, but all right, so we'll call it O. Um, and everything is going to be reduced in size because it's a, a half, so we're going to reduce the size of this figure, and everything is going to be shrunk towards your center of dilation. So in this case, everything is going towards the slope. So again, we don't need a compass for this. Uh, because we're on graph paper, we can do so um, utilizing the slopes. So the nice thing about this one is we can take here, uh, let's see if I can get a good line to use. Here we go. All right, so if I just think of the slope here, right, from here to here, and perhaps it's better if I think of this one as a dotted line, like so. All right, so if I'm doing this, right, that's my slope. I don't actually have to draw lines why I did it as a dotted line. But if you think about what the slope is from here, right, so the slope of O to A, all right, again, slope is rise over run. So if I count this, all right, because I have graph paper, or you could calculate it by the points because the slope, um, the origin is just zero, zero. So we can plug it into the formula if we wanted to. But I've got a rise of, this is eight, and we got a run of negative six. So it's a rise of eight, a run of negative six. Now, if I take my R value, so what my R value is here, if I multiply each the top and the bottom by whatever the R value is, that's going to give me the slope of my new uh, for my new point. Now, notice most of the time when uh, teachers are, or anything you're doing math, they use say simplify your slope, right? I don't want to. I want the overall slope so I can find the proportional change. So 8 times a half is going to be 4. Negative 6 times a half is going to be negative 3. So again, you don't change. All right, so don't simplify, right? Something you're not going to hear very often, right? Multiply by the R, and this will give me my resulting new 
um, way to count my slope to find the next point which is going to be halfway. So if I go back to the origin, the center of dilation, I now count up four, one, two, three, four, left three, one, two, three, I should get a point and it should land on my line, right? And this new spot is going to be a prime, all right, from there. Now I'm going to just move the B here just so it's not confusing. All right, so there's a prime. And we're going to repeat that process for each one of these. All right, so next one, we're going to find the slope of O to B. All right, so again, using my straight edge, line it up. If you would like to, again, if you want to actually draw the, um, the line segment, that's fine but you don't have to. What's going on here? There we go. Um, you don't have to draw a line thing, but you can more than welcome to, but just count one, two, three, four, left two. So it's going to be up four, left two. Again, we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the half, whatever that R value is. And we're going to multiply that so it gets me two over negative one. So now I go back to my origin or my center of dilation, count up two, left one. And again, if you'd like to draw the line or like to have that line there, you should see that it lands right on there. And that's B prime. And I'm going to repeat this process for all, all the points. So now we'll go to O to C. So again, one, two, three, four, right, one, two, three, four, five, six. So up four, right, six. Multiply everybody, again, top and bottom by the R value. That gets me 2 over 3. Back to my origin, up 2, right 3. Here's C prime. Again, if I drew a line from O to C, C prime would land on it. And that's kind of a good check. I usually like to say, uh, if you, you know, the, the dotted lines that I have, just use your straight edge. You know, after you find the points, line them up and make sure that your point landed on it, it should land on it. So for O to D, that's up uh, eight here, right two, so eight over two. That's my overall slope. We're gonna multiply each the top and the bottom by R, because this is the proportional change that we are looking for. That's four over one. So up four, right one, gets me my new spot, D prime. And now I have a new figure, which I'm going to do here. Uh, let's make this a different color. So if I highlight, connect all the dots now, that should be my new figure. I'm just going to shade that in a little bit, just kind of make it easier to kind of pop and stand out so it's easy to see. And I'm going to check visually. Again, all of my corresponding sides should be parallel to each other. So A prime, B prime should be parallel with AB, uh, A prime, D prime with AD, and so on and so forth. And everything looks good. So there is my dilation about the center of the origin. Uh, with a scale factor of a half. All right, so let's look at one other example real quick. Um, and this is just an example of the same thing, but where the center of the figure is, a uh, center of dilation, I mean, is not on the, the origin. It's at some random point. So I still have that. I still have an R value of less than one. So we're going to reduce. All right. If this was an enlargement, you would do the same thing, except it's just going to get bigger. You'd still multiply each uh, thing by by the uh, R value, each part of the slope. So let's see, negative 6, 0. That's M. We've got 0, 4. That's my N. Negative 2, negative 6. Six, and then we've got four, negative two. Okay, so here's my figure. 
Again, using my straight edge, you don't want to free draw this. Use your straight edge. That gives me my figure. Uh, again, we have, we already said the R value is 3 fourths, so it's going to be reduced. So again, slope of. Now, I'm going to label my point, which is R. So that's negative 2, 0. It's right here. All right, so this is my R value. So that's my, my um, center of dilation. So each thing, so if I go back to my thought from before, right, I'm going to draw a line here. Again, I'll make it a dotted line. So it's, again, we don't have to have this part, part. All right, so now I'm calculating that slope, right? So in this case, the slope of R to M. My rise was zero. My run was one, two, three, negative four. All right, so now I'm going to take, again, my R value here, multiply both the top and the bottom by that thing. So it's a proportional change, and that's going to result in zero over negative three. All right, so if I go back to my center of dilation, and now I go... I don't go up at all because up the rise is zero. I just run three, one, two, three. This is my new location for M. So this is M prime. All right, I'm going to do that for each one of these things. So slope of R to N. So from R to N, that's up one, two, three, four, right two. So up four, right two. I'm going to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the R value. So four times three fourths is just three. Two times three fourths is that's one and a half. So I go up three, one, two, three, over one and a half. Now notice one and a half does not land perfectly on a grid line. It's okay. I can still calculate. I can still estimate it, right? Half is not bad. You know, half, a quarter, three quarters, those aren't bad. If you get some crazy decimals, I would just go back and check. It, I mean, it is possible, but um, not nearly as likely uh, when dealing with these. Uh, but it is possible. But just estimate it the best you possibly can. Um, let's see, R to O. Let's see, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So we got down 6. We didn't run at all, left to right. So negative 6 over uh, 0. Multiply again the top and the bottom by making it a proportional change. So that's going to be negative 4 over 0. No, oh, actually, no, sorry. That's going to be negative 4.5. All right, so I'm going to go down four and a half. One, two, three, four and a half. This will be O prime. And last but not least, R to P. Let's see, one, two down. One, two, three, four, five, six to the right. So we've got fix that here. So we got down two, right six. Once again, multiply by the top and the bottom by the R value, three fourths. So that's going to be negative 1.5 over 4.5. So down one and a half over four and a half. One, two, three, four and a half. So this one's going to end up like right in the middle of the box. All right, which is fine and label it P prime. All right, so we can now connect all of those. I'll do it in just like I did before. So although it was a weird amount, right? And then we'll just shade this in, kind of just make it something we can see. Again, I don't want to cover up all any of the other work I've done. I just want to kind of give it a shade so I can just kind of see it. Um, I'm actually going to write, uh, rewrite this point here just so you guys can see it easily since I did it originally in pink. And that's what it is. 
So again, you can check yourself by noticing all of the sides that are um, that correspond to each other should be parallel with the originals, which they do look like. All right, and so therefore it's a good visual check uh, to make sure everything works. All right, so again, take the opportunity um, to go back over the video. Um, you know, uh, try any of this uh, over again with you know respect to what we have just done on these, and um, and then utilize the practice problems for uh, your better understanding.